City of Stevens Point Bicycle and Pedestrian Street Safety Commission Meeting, recorded December 20, 2023. It's 5 o'clock. I'll call this uh, meeting of the Bicycle and Pedestrian Street Safety Commission to order. Uh, roll call. O'Mara? Here. Uh, Plaisance is excused. Uh, Cole? Here. Fisher? Here. Peterson? Here. And Leviton? Yes, here. Perfect, thank you. Uh, I guess before we get to number two, I want to give a warm welcome to Lawrence. First meeting uh, since your appointment. <laughs> in November, uh, so really appreciate you uh, coming on board here for the commission. And since we do have an absence, you will be elevated, so you'll have full voting capabilities for uh, the remainder of the meeting. So, appreciate Good to be it. here, thank you. Okay, the first, uh, second thing on the agenda is a selection of a vice chairman for Bicycle and Pedestrian Street Safety Commission. Uh, I will entertain a motion to nominate. I'll nominate, nominate Dina. Anybody else? Uh, all in favor? Uh, Nina Fisher? Aye. Aye. Do I vote for myself? Aye. <laughs> yes, you can. You can. Okay. Aye. <laughs> we like that. We've <laughs> <laughs> had some where the person would See, if elected, I will not uh, serve. <laughs> I can get a little awkward. Yes. Uh, <laughs> next report of the August 22nd, 2023 meeting of the uh, Bicycle and Pedestrian Street Safety Commission. Have people reviewed the minutes? Or are they been a couple of minutes? entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I so move. Huh? I'll move to approve. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. There's a request to uh, submit an advisory recommendation prioritizing a sidewalk uh, installation near the property located at the 500 Maria Drive. Remember, we discussed this uh, property during our walking audit. Um, I'll just speak very briefly. Yes. Um, so as some of you who are participating in the uh, Transportation Academy from for the last few months now, um, we saw a presentation uh, that was given regarding a proposed uh, sidewalk installation for the property that's identified in the packet, 500 Maria Drive. Uh, one thing I'll just add before I'll turn the floor over to Trevor to give a uh, brief presentation is that, uh, as mentioned in the agenda item, this is an advisory recommendation. It's not binding in any capacity. This is more so directing Director Badoon and his staff that one funding is adequate and and at the earliest possible time to uh, prioritize this area for future sidewalk installation. And with that, I'll kick the floor over to Trevor. Thank you. I'm in person. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not electronic. Trevor Rourke, 601 Washington. Hi. Um, yeah, so most of the information is in the packet, which is really awesome. Thanks for including that, Adam. Um, but uh, one particular thing I'd like to add right off the bat is uh, there were actually a group of residents who were parents, including myself, as well as the Green and Healthy Schools Committee and Principal Carl Banker, uh, all are requesting this. So it's uh, kind of a a joint effort to request this. And uh, if you weren't not part of the Community Transportation Academy, another note I'd add is how um, positive the landowner was, which was actually surprising when we <laughs> met with the landowner, um, the house, uh, uh, the resident, because usually sometimes you get resistance, mainly based on shoveling, 
and the lack of interest in shoveling, but he actually told us he wanted a shovel to have so he can start shoveling this winter. Obviously, it's a little early for that, but um, so it was very supported by um, the resident there, which is great. Um, so this is actually a years in the making. Uh, the principal had interest in connecting this sidewalk to Georgia for at least, I think, four to five years. So it is years in the making, um, but basically more people came to the table to make this request. So if there's any, I guess, specific questions about this property or this connection or the need, uh, I'm here to answer questions. I think this uh, request is prima facie uh, a good request and I would recommend that we just immediately make it. <laughs> hmm. I'll entertain okay. a motion to make the request to uh, include this sidewalk. Do you want to make a motion for me? Like a second? <laughs> yes, no, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm in total agreement. Yeah, uh, we did the the walking audit, and it was very obvious. Like, not only was sidewalk missing, but it was blocked by bushes where they could even walk. So they have to walk in the street. Right in this area. Uh, all in favor? And we need a Aye. second. Oh, oh. A second. Second. You made the motion. <laughs> yeah. Mike? Yes. You made the motion you second. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Getting this clear. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion that passes. Uh, presentation and discussion of the Portage County Safe Routes to School Plan. Yeah. So I wanted to spend some time and talk about this more so because there's been some uh, internal conversations between uh, myself and Director Badoon and then uh, with Mike and Nana as far as uh, wanting to take another look at the existing planning document and uh, prioritize it a little bit more than what we've uh, have been doing. Not saying that we haven't been implementing uh, projects as, as identified within the plan, but by all means, I'm of the attitude that there's always more that can be done in any in any capacity. So I wanted to spend some time to uh, more so talk about the plan itself, the existing plan, kind of give a little bit of, talk a little bit about the scope and then kind of kick it open to the rest of the group to talk about uh, the plan broadly speaking. So the plan, uh, you know, what are some of the reasons, what are some of the key issues that's discussed uh, as it relates to safe routes to school planning. Uh, these were two image or two graphs that I took directly from the plan. I'll note, obviously the data is a little bit outdated given this first graphic uh, talking about obes obesity prevalence among uh, children has data collected from 1963 to 2004, almost 20 year gap uh, now. But you can tell that there's been a spike in the prevalence of obesity and then uh, conversely a decrease in the amount of uh, children, school children walking or biking to school from any distance, short distance, uh, longer distance, longer distance. So really more health reasons is one issue, is one indicator as to why safe routes to school planning has been gaining prevalence amongst communities. Uh, broadly speaking, another being safety as we all know from uh, especially our walk roll audits, you can understand uh, pedestrian bicycle safety for uh, crossing intersections to give an example is something of utmost importance. Uh, land use patterns, making sure that uh, say if there's new development, making sure that um, that new development coincides with or is done in an appropriate matter that you're not going to create any uh, negative consequences associated, associated with that, with uh, traffic mobility and then with bike and pet accommodations. And then naturally environmental aspects as well, um, you know, from an environmental, from a sustainability lens, that's always been something that's been uh, included and it, frankly has been gaining provenant, uh, prominence uh, within safe routes to school planning, 
tying in the benefits of biking and walking with the positive impacts to the environment, uh, less vehicles being used in lieu of walking and biking. As it relates to the planning document, you've heard us talk about this all the time. Uh, it stresses a lot on the five E's in terms of the structure of the planning document, so focusing on specific engineering topics and policies, enforcement, uh, education, encouragement, and evaluation. And again, I'll just note the image on the right-hand side of the screen shows the school districts that were uh, all schools that were included within the countywide safe roads school plan. You'll note there's uh, really one discrepancy that comes to mind right off the hand, uh, right off the bat, that being pods, um, since that was uh, incorporated after the plan was created a number of years ago. The structure of the planning document, it really focuses, it's really kind of broken down into two different sections. The first is talking about specific infrastructure improvements for each school within uh, Portage County. So you see all the schools highlighted within this table of contents section. And then for each school that's referenced, and this is something that I like really well, is that it has breaks each recommendation down within these five E's. So you see education highlighted, encouragement, and then you have the other three listed talking about kind of what is the key issue, what is a recommendation to address that key issue, and then what's the rationale behind implementing that proposed policy. The right side of the this, of this slide here shows more of a graphic highlighting some specific improvements. Uh, infrastructure improvements that can be done more visually so it's easier for the reader to understand. So here I took Madison Elementary since this was highlighted uh, during the last agenda item talking about some curb extensions that you see along Frederick, along West, along First, and then the proposed uh, sidewalk off street path uh, leading more to the back of the school leading to Second and First Street. And again, this is the same format for each of the schools, so if there's a specific school of interest, definitely take a look at the plan to kind of get a gauge as to what has been done since the plan was implemented about a decade or so ago, and then what's uh, some infrastructure improvements that are still outstanding. The second section of the document, this is by all means really the meat of the document, focusing on each of the schools within the county. The second kind of consolidates certain schools into sub areas. So you have the action planning document, and then you have specific, uh, specific areas sectioned off within the county. So this first sub area you see has Madison Elementary, uh, the high school, Pacelli, and St. Peter Middle School consolidated within one uh, sub area, and then it outlines specific actions that should be taken kind of on a, on a, lar a little bit larger, a little bit broader geographical lens related to those five E's again. So that's kind of a quick SparkNotes version of the planning document. So as I mentioned, these internal conversations that we've been having, there's been a, I guess, an increased desire of focusing on this planning document. And by all means, there's going to be elements, there's gonna be elements of the plan that's going to be updated as part of this SS4A grant that I'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, one of the things that I wanna talk with you all about is kind of lay down a little bit of a strategy, so to speak, as to, um, really how to proceed going forward in terms of implementing some policy recommendations uh, within the plan. Um, and the reason, one of the reasons why it's of interest on my end personally, on Director Badoon's end personally, is that there's a ton of grants, frankly, that's out there, uh, implementation grants to uh, help uh, construct, install some of these recommendations. So we're kind of in this fun, happy time where there's so many financial assistance opportunities available that we would be foolish in a way to at least not look at it and explore it and see is it possible, is it doable, and then 
kind of let the chips fall where they may. So, and then also another thing from an advocacy standpoint, naturally, as I mentioned, this is about 10 years or so old. Um, I think having uh, some light shine back on the plan personally would do some good justice in terms of making sure that there's the public recognition of the plan and that really the, the overall goals and objectives of this plan when it was created some 10 years ago, that that's still uh, uh, of the public mindset of achieving that going forward. So uh, I'll kick it over to the group if there's some initial comments. I do have a Anna? question. When yeah. I was looking it over, uh, it shows there's, they all went by a um, half mile radius. And I was wondering if that was picked because, like, if that's where the buses go, like, within a half mile, or what? At what's the radius for buses, I guess, from the school when they start picking kids up? Because if it's a mile, kids are walking a mile. Mm -hmm. So I, it depends upon what grade they're in. There's a different one for older children, and uh, a shorter one is uh, for younger children. Yeah, and I was going to say, I mean, the exact science as to why that was chosen. I'd be lying to you if I know exactly, <laughs> but my hunch is is taking into account a certain great a certain age cohort and what's a expected or what's a reasonable uh, distance that they would travel to go to school. Naturally, older cohorts once you get to maybe middle school, but especially high school, you know it's not uncommon for folks to walk or bike farther distances versus an elementary uh, student. So. No, really good question. Sure. And then uh, looking over it, uh, I think it said 2012 for the document, which I thought was funny because my kid was born in 2012 and she's 11. <laughs> and uh, so she's been going to one of these schools for almost seven years now, starting in kindergarten. And so I, that was easy for me to see, like looking at the goals at that particular school and what's been accomplished. And like a lot of it has been accomplished. So I feel like it needs a whole new list almost because some of them can't be done because there was the big construction project when they got the big ta tax incentive. So one of the things on the list is like they expanded the school so it's not an option. And which school was that? Jefferson. Jefferson, okay. They wanted the, the, it showed on the plan like a parking lot for like the, the staff to ease like the driving in the area. But they expanded the school and moved like the playground so now there, there won't be any room for that. <laughs> yeah. But then, and then the good thing is they got rid of the, the non-used street right in front of the school. Mm -hmm. So that's really nice. But yeah, and then I was looking at some of the things that the school would need to implement. And I don't know if we like keep up how they're doing with that. And that was one thing that was talked about too was um, you know, having conversations with the school district um, about a, the plan itself, B, I guess where their uh, priorities lie in terms of long-term facilities planning. You know, what are some uh, schools that in the short term and the long term uh, they would be looking to implement some of these projects? I think that's something that would be helpful to know um, early on, just since you see this is just one snapshot, but a lot of the parties who's tasked to implement a specific policy recommendation, you see a lot of these are the school district. That I think this is a perfect opportunity for y'all as a commission, uh, certain advocacy groups or specific individuals in the community and the school district to work collaboratively and determine if there's specific um, <coughs> specific policy recommendations to look at and lay a path going forward as to how to implement it. And there are some things that uh, are only in the purview of the school district. For instance, Correct. some of the education stuff. Uh, do we probably as a commission should say, we think it's really important that we teach children how to cross a street or bicycle safety. It doesn't have to, I'm not asking for <laughs> you know, a 15 credit deal, but it could be included in other parts of the curriculum. 
Or, I mean, programming. I mean, yeah. walk or bike to school day. I mean, that, I know when I was, I didn't go to school here, but I mean, that was a mainstay that we did every year that, you know, certain programming that could uh, touch on that educational piece, I think yes. would be a good idea. Any, has there been any data collected as a, regards to how many kids walk and bike and have parents drop them off and bus mm. in some of the schools? I don't know unless specific school. I don't know if specific schools track that information. I don't. I know Trevor. You mentioned not trying to put you on the spot, um, <laughs> but you mentioned at the transportation academy when you were talking with the principal for Madison that didn't he give a rough number as to how many students walk to school each day? Was it was it a? I think it was anecdotal. And it, okay, more anecdotal, not hard, hard raw data. Yeah. Yeah. You just think you thought it changed, it's yeah. improved. Yes. Do they know how many children are bused? Because they keep track of that. that. Yeah. And yeah. they sort of have an idea because of the queuing how many people are get driving. And uh, unless they break the rules, they definitely. <laughs> I'll ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think that uh, if you talk to the uh, school districts, they they probably have more information than we think they do. Although I don't think they're going out with a clicker and no. counting uh, pedestrians. Among other things, depending on the weather, that'll change. Yeah. I mean, I can offer anecdotal evidence. I live on Price Street, and it's the main corridor to Washington School. So just sitting and drinking my coffee, I'll see parents with kids, I'll see kids on bikes and walking. And I'm in the demographic that's mentioned in the article, you know, growing up in the 60s where you just left the house and you biked and you walked. And tons of bikes at schools and, and it seems to be a lot different now. Uh, more kids getting dropped off. But edu the education part seems to be a biggie. I mean, I see all kinds of bike behavior on that street. You have kids weaving, a lot on the sidewalks. Uh, so having to deal with dogs and pedestrians. Yeah. Um, so just what's the best way to get down that corridor to school? Are we encouraging kids to get in the street and um, or to be on the sidewalks? I know there's some discussion about what's the best way to, to bike in Stevens Point. Um, so that's where the education piece, I think, could could come into play. Well, and I'll say too, to touch on that, the uh, I wouldn't say designated route, but uh, listing potential routes. I mean, I'll say Trevor. I mean, Trevor listed it in page twelve of the packet for Madison Elementary. I mean, that's something that could reasonably be done at any school to list. Hey, if you're somebody who wants to bike or want to walk to school, here's a route that has that infrastructure in place that's the safest route, uh, the safest alternative. Yeah, I live in the same area, and for my kids going to Washington, I think we walk they either walked or we walked with them 80% of the time because it was easier to get them to school having them walk than it was to be in the car to drop them off. It was like a NASCAR pit stop or pit lane. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was dangerous. And um, it got better since we got the sidewalk on the southern side of Price by the cemetery. So parents coming from Main Street down Frontenac or Sioux Marie, at least they could, you know, stay on the, the south side of Price Street. Um, but I, I do agree, kids are biking, the, you know, against traffic, and, you know, they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. And it seems like uh, some type of education in school would be very helpful and wouldn't, wouldn't take that much time. I, I used to be a teacher years ago, and <laughs> you could have small, you know, um, small lesson plans on that that you could hit on almost every week. And, it would be beneficial. Any other comments right off the bat? Is this something that's of interest to you all uh, as a commission to you know, take another look at the existing planning document and see kind of what you mentioned, Nana, um, what are some projects that are, have already been completed and what are some projects that are still outstanding um, within 
certain school in the city. Is that something of interest to kind of take a, I think a soft look again? More than being of interest, it is our uh, duty in charge. Okay. Uh, the reason we exist is for this stuff. <laughs> and uh, yeah. if you're talking about a, uh, a very uh, high impact activity, this is one. It may not be as uh, glamorous as uh, putting stuff on uh, Business 51, <laughs> but I think it may be more important for our street safety. Sure. Okay. Um, and I guess the last thing I'll say is uh, I would ask for maybe one or two of you if you want to take a... I wouldn't say a lead per se, but I mean, you'll work with me as far as kind of, you know, taking a look and determining next steps. I guess, is there anybody who's super interested, super passionate, and kind of getting, digging a little bit more in the details? Yeah? Anybody else? Sure. I'll... Okay. Okay. Then I'll follow up with you two yes. about figuring out a time to meet up. But, okay. That's all that I got, unless there's any other comments for that. Okay. And right now we have some staff updates. Yeah. All right. So the first one, uh, the bike-friendly community application, it's kind of crazy to think that it's about four years now since we last submitted the application in 2020 where we received the silver status but um, this bike friendly community uh, designation uh, is recurring every four years that you have to reapply so June of 2024 is the deadline for us to uh, resubmit our uh, submit an application for uh, designation again uh, my plan was to apply for the same designation, silver designation. Um, you know, took a look briefly with the gold standard. Personally, I don't think that we're there yet. Doesn't mean that we can't try for that in the future. It's just, you know, maybe that's something that in the next four years we can uh, take a look at and see what are some low hanging fruit uh, as it relates to that gold standard um, minimum requirements. And the one thing I'll say related to the application, talked about the five E's in the last item. Uh, for this application, there will be the one new section that will be judged on. That would be the equity and accessibility section. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that section, I included that on page 18 of 21 of the packet. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more of what, what the equity and accessibility uh, criteria all entails, feel free to take a look at that. Uh, bike parking ordinance, uh, we talked about that last time. That's still being uh, kind of churned over internally, but I'd say next time I would hope um, I'll have another uh, uh, proposed recommendation for y'all to take a look at. Uh, transit stop planning, this is something that I may have talked about at one point, but I, I can't recall. Uh, that's been something I've been working with uh, Talon, our uh, transit superintendent, of essentially creating a planning document where this commission and the transportation commission can work together to identify our existing uh, bus stop locations, determine or acknowledge the existing infrastructure that's located within these transit stop locations, and gauge the feasibility of uh, new infrastructure that could be installed within those uh, or bus stop. And needs, yeah, needs and the feasibility yes. More so, right away space, uh, for example. So, like one of the w w one example, there's always a a need, an interest of having a uh, shelter in place. Naturally, there's certain bus stop locations that there's just not enough room in the right away to have a bus shelter. So, acknowledging those locations that there is a need for some type of infrastructure, and then uh, whether or not the Kind of the built environment supports that. Uh, that's something that we envision would be included within that planning document. And then 
lastly, determine kind of prioritizing what are certain areas that should be looked at first and foremost as it relates to uh, uh, funding certain types of infrastructure for these bus stop locations. So that'll be something at some point in 2024. We'll probably have a, I'd say probably a joint meeting between this commission and transportation commission to talk about it. Uh, and then the last thing, the SS4A planning and demonstration grant. Um, I know you were all included in the email from last week about uh, the city, the county, and then villages of Plover, Whiting, and Park Ridge being awarded the uh, planning and demonstration grant uh, from the U.S. Department of Transportation. Um, right now, there's a little bit of, I guess before I get to that, I want to give kudos for to Trevor as a co-author for the grant and Dominique Swankstu from the Village of Plover, uh, the three of us working together on that grant application. Um, there's a little bit of fluidity in terms of exactly uh, the timing for our next steps. Um, essentially, we're waiting to hear back from the DOT as far as receiving their memorandum of understanding so we can get that through the approval process with the county. Uh, but my and I would anticipate at some point in spring of 2024 is when uh, the RFP would be sent out and the outside firm would be uh, selected and approved by the Portage County Board and when kind of the first beginnings of the planning process would be undertaken to create the comprehensive safety action plan and to uh, comprehensive safety action plan to update the uh, bike ped plan and then to talk about the demonstration activities that would occur. So there'll be more on that uh, probably in the next few weeks we'll get some more information out as to specific yeah, they're waiting, all waiting for the federal budget. That too. That's what um, it is. <laughs> yeah. So no, I want to give kudos to you all as a commission. I know we talked about this originally back in uh, boy, maybe springtime, about uh, you prioritizing the city, mm -hmm. uh, city staff to look at it and then work together with our other communities. I really appreciate y'all for uh, being engaged and being uh, supportive of the grant opportunity, and it's pretty stellar that we got it, so. <laughs> yes. Yeah, otherwise that is all that I have for staff updates. Trevor? Yeah. Trevor Rourke, 601 Washington. Um, something that's really awesome about that grant winning is it's going to now develop a new iteration of the bike ped plan for the county. Yeah. So that's the supplemental format of the grant we won. Within that, um, in the additional safety requirements is also, and I think Adam alluded to this earlier, is the um, Safe Routes to School Plan. So these are all gonna, this commission is gonna all be in congruence working together with the steering committee and the two subcommittees that are formed. So it's gonna be pretty robust and, and exciting. So just wanted to mention that. And I'll just add, you mentioned with the steering committees, um, I don't, I'm not sure if we <laughs> talked about that as a commission, but uh, one of the steps going forward once an outside firm is selected is that on the county level there'll be a steering committee that will focus on the creation of the uh, action plan within that there'll be the two subcommittees one sub subcommittee focusing on the update to the countywide bike ped plan and then the other one other committee focusing on the demonstration activities to support those two planning documents so that'll be something where I mean, those, th this will be a county subcommittee, so there'll be county stakeholders throughout the area who will uh, provide input who those representatives are, obviously are still to be determined, but uh, throughout, that, throughout this planning process in 2024, 2025, there'll be updates brought to you all about specific uh, bike ped proposals within city limits that uh, you would have purview over and you would be able to provide input on. So I just want to make that point that even though there'll be a separate subcommittee focusing on the creation of the bike ped plan, you all as a commission will still have uh, influence as it relates to city-specific uh, proposals. 
Yeah, last thing to piggyback on that. So, Nana and Michael, <laughs> you won't be alone on this Safe Routes to School planning. You'll have support <laughs> <laughs> from both the consulting firm and these other committees. So. I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> uh, there being no f uh, further business, we stand adjourned. A video of this meeting is available for viewing on the city's website, stevenspoint.com slash videos.